Statistics Roulette Probability Example. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get futuristic, we're going to need statistics. You're not required to, but if you have access to this, first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one, because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. OneNote presentation. We're currently in the OneNote presentation section 1826 roulette probability example. Looking at this from the perspective of learning concepts related to probability, which we will later apply to the more broad category of statistics in general, games of chance, said such as roulette being great examples to learn probability concepts because these games have been built directly on top of the concepts of probability. Now, some people really like looking at games to understand concepts of probability because they are fun. Other people don't like it so much because they don't like to imagine themselves gambling and they would like to learn more real life types of scenarios that aren't basically in a casino. However, whatever you're perspective is breaking down these games can be fun number one and number two they are one of the most direct routes to learn the concepts of probability because once again they're built basically purely on top of those concepts once we have those concepts down then we can apply them to many different areas for example in different areas of statistics which we will do in future uh, courses or presentations all right, so we've got our roulette wheel here, this being American uh, roulette. And with the roulette wheel, there are many different things that we can place bets on, but we can basically think of them as independent from each other and therefore be able to break down the probability for each type of bet in a very systematic type of way. So what we have here is of course the wheel. Now we have the numbers on the wheel and the numbers are just going to go up from 1 to 36. So we have 36 total numbers on the wheel, but then they're going to add the two other numbers, which are the green ones of the zero and the double zero, which will, of course, slant the odds a little bit, depending on what we're going to be betting on. Then, of course, you can see that we have the red areas and we have the black areas within uh, the roulette wheel. So if we just imagine the different types of things that we can bet on, we could say, okay, I can bet on the, the, the little ball <laughs> landing on one individual number. So that's one thing that we can bet on here, just placing the, our chip on one number. We're going to imagine the chip is going to be $1. Uh, and then you can multiply that dollar if you want to have $10 once we start to think about the payoffs and so on and so forth. And yet put the dollar chip on top of a particular number and then we'll think about the payoff that would be received if that number was hit. And if you don't get the number, they take your dollar, right? That's going to be the general idea. We can also be betting on red or black. So we have the red or black, noting that out of the 36 numbers, half of them are basically red and half of them are uh, black, even though they didn't break it out like all of the evens reds and all of the evens black. 
But, and then we have the two numbers that are green. So we can look at that and break that out. We also have the concept of even versus odd. So it could land on an even number or an odd number, which basically gives you the same odds as red or black because half of these 36 numbers are even or odd. But then again, you're probably going to lose if it's going to be the zero or the double zero, right? And then you can bet on the first 12 numbers. So if I get on any number from one to 12 or the second 12 numbers or the third 12 numbers, and we can think about those items. Now there's two things that we have to take into consideration to consider whether or not a game is gonna be uh, fair or not. And remember that when you're in a casino, of course the game is not going to be fair if you're betting against the casino. We're gonna take that up front a priori. That's what we expect to be the case. Remember that if you were in a casino setting, you gotta pay the casino is gonna have to be paid in some way or another. If you were to bet on horse races, for example, or if you're having a game of, of poker, then you're actually betting against other players. You're not really betting against the house. How does the house make money then? They take money out of the pot. So they, you pay, if you bet on a horse race, you win the horse race, that they're gonna take a, a piece of the pot and then pay out for their services of providing the horse race, right? Same with a poker game. But if you're betting against the house, which happens like in a blackjack or in this roulette situation or a craps situation, then, then you would think the odds in the long term have to be favored towards the house because that's how they're going to pay for the game. That's one way that you can look at it. Now, are they being deceptive in doing that and so on and so forth and manipulating people and so on? You can get, right? that's not good or whatever, but that's going to be the, the idea. Uh, is of course the odds are going to be slanted against you. Now these concepts can be applied to many different areas, most directly, for example, in investing. If you are investing in stocks and bonds, we have these same kind of concepts, but we would expect a favorable payout, which you can think of as basically the difference between gambling and investing. Gambling means you're trying to usually, if you're gambling against the house, you're trying to beat the house in the short term because that's the only term that you're going to beat the house and that's the game right you're not going to win in the long term because you're going to lose in the long term because the odds are against you in the long term whereas investing it's not a short-term game you have a favorable bet on the long term and that's what you're that's what you're going for you're trying to do a, a long-term game so the same concepts apply except that investing you're typically going to have a favorable payout if you are playing against somebody else games of chance then you don't want to have favorable or unfavorable typically because they're your friend. You want to come up with a game that is even, has an even odds because then it's fun to play with someone that has even odds, right? So right off the bat, we're going to say, okay, if we're sitting in the roulette table, I'm not expecting to win in the long run. Hopefully I could win in the short run, possibly. And in the long run, I'm probably going to be paying the casino for the service of hanging out and playing the game or doing whatever you do and maybe make some of that money back with free stuff, like whatever, if you're into drinks or, or whatever they give you, right? They're going to comp your room, right? <laughs> or something like that. But we're probably not from going to have the perspective that we're going to win in the long term. Okay, given that, we could say, let's analyze, let's break down this roulette wheel. So how many numbers do we have on the wheel? We've got numbers one through 36, right? We have 36 numbers on the wheel, plus we have the zero and the double zero. So if I was to break this out like in Excel, I'm gonna say that we have 37 and 38, uh, or, or I can put them up top this time. I put them at one and two, but the bottom line is there's actually not 36 numbers because there's a zero and a double zero. Therefore, we're talking about basically 38 uh, numbers total or things that the ball can land on in terms of numbers. All right, so let's analyze betting on uh, red or black, which is kind of similar to just simply betting on even or odd. They just jumbled up the reds or blacks so that betting on even and odd is not exactly the same as betting on the reds and black. At least the numbers aren't exactly the same. Uh, because then they can have two different things that you can bet on, right? So there's two things we want to consider in terms of whether a game is, is fair or unfair or what, are the, what is the expected payout of the game. 
The one is, is going to be what's the odds of me winning, but that's only half of it. The other thing you need to know is going to be the payout, what's going to be the payout matrix. So for example, if you bet on just red or black, it's going to be a payout of one to one. You put your chip down. If you win, they put another chip on top of it, giving you the $2 and you take them back. One being the original dollar you put down, the other being the winning. If you lose, they take your dollar, right? So that's going to be a one for one. You could write it this way. Uh, you win one, uh, you lose. It's going to be a uh, negative one. Let's think about the odds then. All right. Well, if the odds of getting uh, red, if you let's imagine, let's pick one. Let's just pick red because it's the first one. How? What's my likelihood of winning? We can say, okay, well, there. Let's pull out the trusty calculator. There's 36 actual numbers divided by two, 18 numbers, right? So there's 18 out of not 36 though, out of 38 because of the two numbers here. So we have 36 actual numbers plus the zero and double zero. That's out of 38. So my odds of hitting is actually 47, 37, right? So that's going to be 18 over 38, moving the decimal over 47, 37 about. So what we would like to do is also calculate the odds, the rest of the odds. So if you're not going to win, you're going to lose. What's the odds of losing? It's going to be 38 minus 18 or 20, or you can think of it as 36 divided by 2 is 18 again, plus the zero and double zero. So there are 20 spaces on this wheel that it can land on where we lose out of once again, the total of 38, which gives us an odds of 52.63 calculated as 20 over 38. There's the 52.63. So then to double check that our numbers are correct, they should add up. So we can say these are my ratios, 18 over 38. 20 over 38, that adds up to 38, 20 plus 18 over 38. And that of course adds up to one. So in other words, we can also look at it from percents, 47.37, that's not a 40, 47.37 plus 52.56 adds up to 100. And that always should be the case. That's kind of like our double check. If you've, if you've done accounting, right? That's like our double entry accounting system is in balance. We've accounted for all scenarios, the wins and the losses adds up to 100. So that gives us an idea that we are correct on this. And so there we have our totals. So I just totaled it up two ways. All right, then we can calculate, all right, what's gonna be the expected value then given, given these uh, circumstances. Let's bring this down a bit. We're going to say that to win, we're going to say you get paid, we'll say $1. Now, if you paid $10, you would get paid 10 times 1 or 10. And if you lost, uh, you, you're, you're going to lose $10. In that case, you'd put $10 down. And then, and then if you win, they put $10 on top. And if you lose, you'll lose 10. But let's keep it at 1 to keep it simple. $1. And you have a 47.37% chance of winning. So that's going to give you the uh, 0.4737. What about losing? For losing, we're going to lose a dollar at odds that we calculated up here, 5263. So that, of course, adds up to the, to the 5263. And so then what is my expected value then? It's going to be the 0.4737 minus the uh, 0.5263 or the 0 0.0526. What does that mean? It means we're going to lose on average, you would expect about 0.05% uh, of a dollar or in other words, about 5.26 cents uh, every time we play. That looks a little counterintuitive at first because you're like, hey, wait a second. Even if they let me bet the minimum of a dollar, then there's no way I'm going to I'm going to lose five cents out of the dollar. I'm either going to make a dollar or I'm going to lose a dollar. That's how it works. And that is true in the short run. So in the short run, you can win or lose a dollar. And uh, and if you win in the short run, the more you win in the short run, the more likely if you actually want to win is to leave the table at that point, because in the long run, the more you play the game, the odds will go towards losing on average 5.26 uh, cents. 
Now, the casino, from the casino's perspective, they don't care so much if you stay on the table or not, unless you bet like a million dollars and then you won and then you left the table or something like that. And you got really lucky for a short term or something, right? But, um, but they're basically saying, hey, look, in the long run, because we got people at these tables all the time, they can be pretty sure that over the long run of spinning this wheel, that they have pretty consistent returns at about uh, 5.26 uh, favorable to them, uh, the casino, right? So they can be, they can actually be pretty consistent in how much they're going to to earn over over the the life. So we'll double check that, and we can say, can we check that empirically with Excel? We can. We can create basically a scenario to get a better idea of that. But before we do, let's go to the next one and say, okay, well, what if I bet on like the first uh, 12 numbers? So, so the even and odd calculation would be much the same as the, as the red and black, right? The odds are basically the same. Uh, let's go to the first 12 numbers. So in the first 12 numbers, you would, you, you would say, okay, well, there's 36 numbers, not counting the zero and the double zero divided by... Uh, uh, so to, when we could say we want the first 12 or the second 12 or the third 12 numbers. So if I say 36 divided by three, then we have uh, 12, 12 and 12, right? Adds up to 36. So we're gonna say, all right, well, what would be the odds then if I bet on that? You would think getting one out of one of the numbers of the first 12 is not going to be favorable at first glance or at least the odds are not going to be favorable to you but that's only one part of the factor the other factor is the payout that we need to take into consideration all right so we're going to say all right what is the payout in this one they're going to say they're going to give us two to one so if we put one dollar down you can say you can multiply times ten ten dollars or whatever but if you put one dollar down on this first one let's say then if you win you get a number between you know one and twelve then they're going to put a dollar they're going to put two dollars on top of it you take the three dollars back one being your original investment or bet and then if you lose they only take the dollar so you only lose a dollar so it's like wait isn't that favorable because now i'm getting two to one odds well obviously it's not exactly favorable because uh, because the likelihood of me actually getting those numbers isn't even. It's not 50-50. So we have to look at the other side of the equation and say, okay, what's the other side of this thing? What are the odds of me actually winning? Well, the first one is I have 12 numbers. Out of how many numbers are there? There are 38 numbers that it can possibly land on. Once again, that being the 36 numbers plus two for the zero and the double zero. And, what's, and that comes out to an odds of 31 uh, 3156, which is 12 over 38. So what's my odds of losing? Well, I have 30, 36 plus two or 38 numbers minus the 12 winning numbers means that there's 26 numbers that it could land on that I would lose out of the same 38, which gives us 26 out of 38, which is 68% about. If we add that across, that's going to give us 12 plus 26 is 38. 38 denominator stays the same. 38 out of 38 is 100 or 31.58 plus the 68.42 is 100%. That's our double check that we have calculated this uh, properly. So then we can say, all right, what's my expected value then on this? Well, I'm going to win. Uh, if I win, I get $2. And if I was to uh, lose, I'm only going to get I'm only get uh, $1. If I win, $2 is only going to happen, though, 31.58% of the time, which we calculated up here. So that means that's going to give us a value of 2 times the 0 0.3158, which is 0 0.6361. On the negative, uh, if we lose, we only lose a dollar, but that's going to happen 68.42% of the time, which comes out if we multiply that out, of course, to 0.6842, which once again gives us 0.6316 minus the, six, the 0.6842, about 0.0526, which is 0.0526 of the dollar. 
uh, and that is about uh, five cents, right? So about 5.6 cents. So we came out to the same expected value, which again, the casino is probably not even going to let us, we might not even be able to bet a dollar. We're going to have to bet like $5, <laughs> right, to start. So you're not going to actually lose five cents for, per bet. But in the long run, you would expect on average to lose about five cents once again. So we got to the same expected value, which once again, we can kind of test empirically using Excel simulating our roulette wheel, which we'll talk about how you might construct shortly. But before we do, let's say, hmm, let's look at the next one. This is, I'm seeing a pattern here. There's a pattern happening. Let's look at the next one. What if we bet on one number? So we just put our number, we just put our bet down on one of these numbers. Now, I don't like doing that all the time or much personally, because it's like, that's not going to happen. You only have like one out of not 36, but 38 chances that can't be a fair or even game, but they're going to pay you a lot more because they're going to be like, well, wait a second. That's only one side of the table. You got to look at the other side, which is that on the payout here, we're going to give you $35 if you win. So it doesn't happen that often, but you get $35 and you're only going to lose a dollar. So that's 35 to one are the odds you're like, oh, 35 to one. And you could bet like $10 on it, right? And then, you know, 10 times the 35, right? So you could say that maybe that, you know, is worth doing it. Because if I hit that, then I, I don't know, I'll go to the, I'll go to the bar and actually pay for my drinks or something. I don't know. And if I lose, I expect them for free. Dang it, you sons of anyway uh so let's go let's go and say okay well let's look at the uh uh the odds of winning well you only get one not out of 36 though out of 38 because there's 36 numbers plus the zero and the double zero so that's going to be so the odds of me winning then are only one over 38 which is going to be that point uh the point uh, 026 or 2.63. What about the odds of losing? Well, all the other numbers, which are 36 plus two, because the zero and the double zero minus that one winning number means that there's 37 chances on that wheel that I could lose out of 38 divided by 38 is going to give us that very high 97.37 chance that we're going to lose. So that adds up to 38 over 38 which makes sense. That gives us my double check number, which makes me feel good as an accountant. It's like my balance sheet's in balance, 97.37. Okay, so let's move forward and then see my expected value. What do you think it's gonna be? I don't know, because I'm seeing a pattern here. Could it be the same expected value? It's gonna be, th we win $35 if we win, but that's only gonna happen 2.63% of the time. So $35 times 0 0.0263 is gonna be point uh, 9211. What about losing? If we lose, we only lose like a dollar, dude. Don't even worry about it, man. But that's going to happen like 97% of the time, though. I feel like I should take that into consideration. So that's going to be 0.9211 minus the 0.9737. Oh my goodness. It comes out to the same expected value of that, uh, of that. 0.0526. So once again, on average, even though we could win that big pot of 35, that the expected value, and that might happen over one bet, which means that you want to probably leave and then may, maybe not go to the bar and waste it at the bar, but maybe like, I don't know, go put it some, put it into the bank or something. I don't know, do something useful with it. But you, but, but if you keep playing over the long term you would think that you would lose on average the 5.26 cents on average. Now you might ask, okay, what would be the payout to make this game fair? Because it's not likely that I'm going to win. But if, if this was zero, then I could call it a fair game, right? So I could say, okay, well, what if I got a payout intuitively? I could say there's 38 numbers on the board, right? 38. So to make it fair, you would you would think that they would have to pay you like like 38 minus one that one number that's going to hit meaning 37 right 37 to one they'd have to pay you 37 dollars to one not 35 dollars to one and let's see if that makes sense so we're going to say all right would that make it a fair game so then if if you bet if you if you win 
you have one chance out of 38, which is the same, uh, one chance out of 38. Uh, and if you lose, you still only have 37 out of 38. So the odds have not changed, but the payout changed. So when you win, you're going to get 37 instead of $35, but that only happens 2.63% of the time, which gives you then the calculation of the 37 times the 0 0.0263, which is the 0 0.97368. And then when you lose that, you only lose a dollar, but once again, that happens 97.37% of the time. So the payout is even. So that, so if you, if you, if, so it is possible, even though the odds are not uh, the same clearly to have a fair game in the long run if you weigh it out with the proper payout, right? So that's the idea. So once again, the idea would be, so if, uh, you, if you're playing a game, you wanna calculate the expected value typically. If you were trying to, to make a game or ask the question, what would make a game fair or unfair or so on, then you could try to calculate you know what the what the odds versus the payout would need to be the unknown whatever the unknown is whether that be the odds or the payouts to make the expected value fair now when would we expect to have a fair game in investing in the long run you might lose money in the stock market but hopefully in the long run it the odds are in your favor when you're investing in the casino you're going to lose money in the long run but in the short run you might beat the odds and that's basically what the gambling is kind of doing in a game against your friend, you'd probably want to make the game even expected value because you're not trying to beat your friend. You're trying to just play a fun game, which in that case, you would think you would want a fair game, right? That would be the general idea. All right. So then let's say, let's say what would be the expected value to win uh, two times? So, so we might say, can I calculate the expected value to win uh, two if I went two times? betting on red so we're going to bet on red and we've made the strategy that we're going to bet two times on red just to analyze this from another angle all right so the payout uh is going to be the same on red or black as we saw before they're going to pay out one to one but the odds are going to be uh, a little bit different because the the odds that we get a win is going to be once again the 36 over 2 or 18 out of the 38 numbers 36 plus the 2 0 and double 0 and then 20 numbers that we lose which is the 36 plus the 0 and the double 0 I'm sorry the 36 divided by 2 plus the 0 and the double 0 out of 38 so here are our odds that adds up to uh, the 100 so then our uh, expected value is going to be to win. We have uh, the, the, the same odds we looked at before, the same expected value, 1 times the 4737, and you lose 1 out of 5263 to give us that same uh, 0 0.0526. Uh, now, the, the next spin, although we've already planned to bet two times, is the same because it's an independent spin. So the odds of us winning on the second spin of betting on red, we're gonna basically come out with the same uh, calculation for, for the two of them. And so then we could say, okay, well, if we did this two times, what would be the expected value after two times? Well, you could, you'd say, well, after you could take one spin, 0 0.0526 times two, which would be 0.1053, or in other words, about 10.53 cents, which makes sense because on average, we expected to lose five cents if we did this over and over a bunch of times. Therefore, if we did it two times, even though we decided to bet on red both times, you would expect that, that it would be twice that. So you can I can add these two up, or I could take one of them basically times two. Now let's think about it uh, from the perspective of having those two games played out. So if you think of the two games uh, being played out, what, what could happen between those two games? One outcome is that we can win both. 
Now, what's the likelihood that we uh, win both? So, so if I go to my two independent uh, tables over here, we had the, the first one to win both. We had a probability of 47.37 and then times the 47.37 is going to give us then the uh, 2243 and I should probably do it in decimal format. This is going to be 0 0.4737 times the 0.4737 is going to give us 22.4% uh, chance. So that's going to be to win both. We multiply them together. We get the 22.4. What about to lose both? That's the other thing that can happen. We bet on red and they come up with uh, two blacks, let's say. Well, if that happened, then it would be 0.52.63. So that's going to be this one. And then times the second one also has a 0.5263 chance, which gives us a 27% uh, percent chance of that. And then this one's the complicated one because you could win one and we could lose one. Now that could happen two different ways, however, because I could win on the first one and then lose on the second one, or I could lose on the first one and win on the second one. So, so the two ways that that could happen is we have a, a probability of the four, let's say 0.4737 of winning on the first one and then losing on the second one. And that would be then times the uh, 0.5263. And that would be these odds. And then I could do, I could do the same thing and say, well, what if I, I could lose on the first one, which would have a probability of the 0.5263 times winning on the second one, which would be 0.4737. So it comes out to that same number. And then I can add those two together uh, plus, or let's just say times two. And that's going to give us our 0.4986. Uh, so, so if I get those done correctly, I should come up to my same total. So I can analyze this out of the two rules by saying, well, I have a 22.44% chance to win both. We've got a 27.7% chance to lose both and a 49.86 chance to win one and lose one, whether we win the first one or lose the first one, win the second one or lose the second one comes out to 100%. That gives us our trusty double check that we're doing things uh, properly. So what are the expected value then? Well, if I look at this from two spins now, I could say, what can happen? Well, I could win both. What would happen then? You'd have, you'd have, uh, uh, you win both at 22.44 uh, likelihood. So that's going to give us then the 0.4488. And we're going to, we would win $2 if that happened. That's what that two stands for, the $2 payout. And then you could say, okay, well, if I lose both, then you're going to lose $2. And that's going to happen at 27.7% of the time. So we have the first one was 2 times 0.2244. That gives us the 0.4488. The second one is we lose 2 times the 0.2770. That's the 0 0.5540. And then the next one is we could uh, win. If we win, we get paid a dollar and then we lose a dollar or we lose a dollar and then get paid a dollar. That means there's going to be a zero payout between the two of them. And that is actually going to happen 49.86% uh, of the time. Zero times that is still going to be zero. And therefore, we once again get to our expected value 0.448 uh, minus, point, wait a second, 0.4488 minus the 0 0.5540 gets us to the 0 0.1053, which makes sense because that would be the 0 0.0526 times two that we got before because we're playing this game uh, two times and the expected value would be uh, would be this number uh, per spin. And now we analyzed it from the perspective of spinning it twice with a particular strategy. Now note we've been thinking about, of course, one dollar, but you can you can think about the expected value if you bet ten dollars right so if you're betting ten dollars instead of one dollar the the rate would be 0 0.0526 and if you're betting ten dollars you would expect to lose on average the 10 times 0 0.0526 which would be 
0.5263, uh, which would be about you know 50 cents now per bet. And that might happen because that might be the minimum bet that they're going to force you to bet every time you play the game. If it was 100, you're betting $100. 100 times the 0 0.0526, of course, means that we would lose on average $5.26 per bet after we bet over and over again. And then, of course, $1,000 would be 1,000 times the 0 0.0526 is going to be about $52.63 on average per bet if we bet on this uh, over and over and over again. Now, let's see if we can understand this a little bit more intuitively. You can do this in Excel and do some kind of like empirical testing to say, could I put this into Excel, simulate the rolling of the roulette wheel or the spinning of the roulette wheel so that we can uh, so that we can test out our answers, right? So we can say, all right, our numbers, I'm going to give us our numbers one through, I'm going to say 36. And then you can see here, the the 30 the, the 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 last two here which are 38 numbers because 37 and 38 are the zeros and double zeros so that's the total numbers that we're looking at so then we can say all right what if we were to spend this thing and so we're going to have our number of spins we're going to imagine that we spin it 500 times i don't have all 500 times here but we'll imagine that we spun this 500 times we can do this in excel with a formula such as this we might work this problem in excel so if you want to look at that you can and we'll go through all the formulas and stuff but just to get an idea it would be equals random between i want to get a number between 1 and 38. now you might say hey look it's not going to give me the zero and double zero that way and that's fine i'm just going to assign 37 and 38 to the numbers zero and double zero so my so just so i can then do a random number generator out of one through 38 numbers right and so this is going to be the random number generation now note that if you do this in excel it will then give you a number that will regenerate every time you click on it and that's fine in some cases you might not want that in which case you can copy them and paste them special and lock the cells if you so choose so then we're going to say all right well how many of these numbers did we get there's how many numbers could we get there's 38 numbers these two representing zero and the double zero and we're then going to say let's do our counting uh, formula so we can we can then say you could use a frequency distribution uh, if you wanted to a spill function but because we have the numbers here it's pretty easy for us to see these whole numbers uh, and we don't have any decimals that we have to deal with so we can just use the count function we want to count if I chose this range, the outcomes, and we're imagining there were 500 of them. And then, uh, and then the other side of this is going to be the criteria. So count all of these numbers when you see a one. There were 10 ones out of five out of the 500 random ones that we did. How many twos? There were 11 twos. How many threes were there? There were 12 threes, and so on and so forth. We can then say, all right, well then give me the percentage of the total by the way if i count these up and i sum them up they should come up to 500 why because we imagined that we simulated the spinning of the wheel 500 times so that's going to give us our double check number and then i could say look at my percent of the total so now we're going to say all right we've got 10 here 10 out of 500 that gives us uh, two percent this next one was 11 out of 500 12 out of 500 this is the percent of times that the particular number showed up because we would expect each number to appear at equal likelihood you would expect these numbers to be fairly uh, close to each other right and so then we can say all right well let's calculate that let's say that we then say that we want to calculate uh, the mean so now we're taking this is the mean of the percentages with an average function which comes around uh, 2.63 this is the median uh, of them which is just going to be the the median uh, calculation the one in the middle and then the mode which is calculated with the mode function let's take a look at our odds then what would we expect to happen with with any uh, number you'd have one number uh, out of 38 numbers because there's uh, one number out of 38 there's 36 numbers plus two the zero and the double zero 
out of 38, we would expect then the odds to be about that 2.63%, which is of course what we got with our mean here. That kind of makes sense that we basically tested that, that intuition kind of empirically. Now, if, we, if that was gonna be what we would expect each time and we spun it 500 times, times 500, how many individual numbers would we expect to get? Around 13.16, about. That's the actual count that we would expect if we spun the wheel uh, 500 times for any one of those particular numbers. And you can see that's pretty close to what we have here. If we look at the mean of these numbers now, this is the mean of the counting, the counted numbers, which is just the average function that we used, adding them up, divided by the number of them, which was uh, 500. All right, so then what was our expected value? You will recall that with all of our expected value calculations, we came out to that 0.0526, no matter which game we talked about, meaning we expected on average to lose about 5.26 uh, cents on average uh, over a long period of time. So we're not gonna lose that on one bet, but if I did it 500 times, I was just hanging out at that roulette wheel, watching them spin that thing 500 times, we would then have the 0.05263 times 500, and that's gonna give us our expected loss of $26.316 over that whole time frame, right? So let's say, let's say that what actually happened uh, if we count the wins, uh, let's say that we have the winnings were uh, 900 because we picked one or 19. We picked one of these numbers, I think it was four to bet on. And let's say we bet on that and we won 19 times. And that means that if we won uh, uh, 19, 19 times, then the payout was $35 per win. So we won 19 times and they paid us out $35. Every time we won, we're like, yeah, yeah, that's right. And then, but then, and these are the count if formulas to find. And then we're saying we lost though. Uh, we lost in 500 times minus the 19 times, which is 481 uh, times, but we only lost a dollar. So that's gonna give us uh, the 481. So if we get our totals, we've got the total count of 500 and we've got our total of uh, the 184. Now this one actually came out positive. If I look at the difference between what we expected to happen, we have this difference. Now that could happen just randomly, but if you did this in Excel and you repeated this over and over again, you would expect to be hovering around uh, an expected value of around 26. Now, and if you just kept on clicking on it in Excel, you'd get some numbers that are are above 26 uh, and some that are, are going to be below. In other words, if you looked at this difference, you're going to get sometimes uh, positive numbers and sometimes negative numbers. So that's the general idea. So you can get an idea for the feel of how close your expected value calculation is here if you basically repeat that. So let's do it again. Uh, this time, let's do it for the bet on uh, red or black. So we're gonna do it again. Now, this is just gonna be our graphs of uh, the percentages here that we graphed out here that was hovering around uh, the 2.6, uh, somewhere here. And this is the one where we did the count, which we saw was hovering around, you know, like the 13 or so. Okay, and then let's do another one, roulette. This time, we're gonna be betting on red or black. Now, when you bet on red or black, notice that the odds you can basically said, say would be like betting on even or odd, or betting like on the first few numbers, one through uh, 18, right? 36 numbers divided by two. And in essence, there are 18 numbers that are gonna be either red or black. Right, and then there's the two, the zero and the double zero, which are not red or black. So how can I construct something in Excel to kind of, to mirror that? One way you might do that is to say, look, I'm just gonna take all the red numbers. So I'm gonna list them out one, two, uh, one, three, five, seven, nine. Uh, and then it skips not to the, uh, 
to the to the odds, but goes to the even, 12, 14, 18, 16, uh, and then goes to 19, right? So they kind of switched it up between evens and odds. So if I just list all of those numbers out, here's all the reds, and then here's all the blacks, and then there's the two greens. I'm then going to assign them another number, which is just going to be from 1 to 38, and that will make it easier for me to actually do the calculation uh, within, within Excel because I'm going to say all the red ones are going to be using this assigned number of 1 uh, to 18. And I can say if, it, if I hit on 1 to 18, that hit one of the red numbers, and that'll help me to kind of just make this from a uh, Excel standpoint. All right, how would that look then? We're going to say, all right, we've got then the count, which we're going to say uh, one up to 500 that we're going to randomly generate. And so this is going to be our random number generation, which uh, is going to be then our random numbers between one and uh, the 38. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and give me the actual number to kind of code switch this over here. So in other words, if I randomly generate a number between 1 and 36, and I came out to a 28, then here's the, here's the 28, and that's actually a black number, and it's the actual number on the roulette wheel that we're going to say is 20, right? If I wanted to make it that way so I can go back and forth between them, right? So this was a 34, so a 34 here is actually 31 on the wheel. Here's a 2. A 2 is actually a red number, and it's going to be a 3 on the wheel. So it doesn't really matter for us to calculate kind of like the odds because the idea would be the same. Uh, but that's that's how you might you know construct that. And that was done with a lookup table, by the way, in Excel. So if we wanted to see how to do that in Excel, we would do an X lookup and say, I want you to find then uh, this random number in here and return to me the uh, related number in uh, this category. So find this random number over here and then give me, return to me the related one over in this column. So then we could say, all right, so what did we, what did we come up to? We have our buckets that we can say, this is going to be our buckets. We have one to 18 are going to be red. So based on these numbers, not on the red, not the actual numbers, but the ones we assigned, 1 to 18 is red, black are 19 to 36, and the green numbers are the last two, 36 uh, to 38. So given that, we can do our end of the buckets, the last bit of the buckets over here. This time I'm going to use a frequency uh, table, which means I'm going to say a spill array formula and say uh, take take the these numbers and give me the count that has the bucket ending at 18, 36, and 38. So this is the range that we're looking at. And this is the end of the range, which we need for the frequency function. And we've got 249 up to 18, from 18 to 36, 27, 227, and the green, which there were only two of them, of course, has a much lower count of 24 uh, times. If I look at that out of 500, because we're imagining we spun the wheel 500 times again, we got 249 red out of 500. That's going to be the 49.8. We got 227 out of 500 on the black. 45.40. We've got 24 out of 500 on the green. And if we add those percentages up, that brings us to the 100%. Now we can compare that to the expected odds that we calculated way over here somewhere where we did for the red and black. Where did we do that? We did that like way over here. And we said it was this 47.37 when we calculated, which is of course just 18 over the 38. Compare that to what actually happened. What actually happened out of 500 is we've got a percent of 49.80. So the difference between those is 0.024. And again, if you did this in Excel and let these recalculate, you can keep on recalculating this and you can see the difference will sometimes be negative and sometimes positive as you basically regenerate that. If you want to see that in Excel, we do that. What would be the expected value? 
the expected value per spin is once again 5.26% or 0.0526 of a dollar. If we spin it 500 times, we get to that same negative $26.32 on uh, the expected value. So what actually happened, we have the wins. We had 240 some wins, 249 wins. And I also did this with another count if formula so you could see the, how to do it that way as opposed to the frequency calculation but it comes up to the same number and then the payout was one dollar if you win 249 how many losses did we have 251 that was the 251 actually i think it changed because i recalculated it 249 oh the losses are the 227 plus 24 the 251 251 you lose a dollar so we won 249 out of the 500 spends and we lost 251 for a total of uh two two dollars we lost two dollars and the difference then we expected to lose 26 dollars we only lost two dollars so out of the 500 spends difference 24. again if you redid this a whole bunch of times this some this number would sometimes be positive and uh, sometimes be uh, negative. All right, now let's look at it. We'll do the, the next one, try to do this a little faster. We're running long here. So let's say we do the next one, and now we're looking at the betting on the first 12. That was this one here. So we can say, all right, well, if I do my same numbers, I'm gonna say one through, through 38 numbers, the last two being the zero and the double zero. And we can then just say that we have the buckets of 1 through 12 that's where we're going to say that we win and then the buckets 13 to 24 buckets the next 12 numbers 25 through 36 and then 37 and 38 in the final bucket you can't bet on those because that represents the zero and the double zero well you could bet on those but not with this 12 number bet so then if we did our count uh thing we're gonna we're gonna once again uh do our our random number generation we did it again for 500 numbers and we didn't do all 500 but that's the idea random number generation between 1 and 38 gives us our random numbers that are generated we're looking for the winning bets between numbers 1 through 12 to simulate our bet so so here's our buckets we've got the uh, 12 24 36 38 that's the end of the buckets we're using our frequency calculation now, which is gonna say, hey, look, look at all of these numbers and give me the related count uh, up to 12, and then from 12 to 24 and 24 to 36 and 36 to 38. So we have zero to 12, 160 counted, 12 to 24, 174, three counted, uh, 24 to 36, 147 counted, and then 36 to 38, 20 counted for a total of 500, which matches the number of spins that we did that makes sense. If I take then the 160 divided by 500 spins, we get 32%. If I take the 173 divided by 500 spins, we get 0.34 or 34%, 29%, and then of course only 4% because this just represents the zero and the double zero. This is going to give us the odds that we would expect. What odds would we expect? Well, there's 12 numbers divided by 38 numbers. So you'd expect 31.58. What actually happened? Around 30, uh, 32%, right? So this one, this one, and this one are all similar bets. And this one's different because, of course, that just re represents the zero and the double zero. So the difference is 0 0.0042 to what we would expect, to what actually happened in 500 spends in terms of uh, the, the likelihood of it happening. The difference on the second one, if I take that same percent and compare it to the second one is this, and then the third one, it's this. And then again, for this number, that's not the same odds because that would only happen two times out of 38. So the, so the expected value, same expected value for this game, 
because the expected value for all the games was 5.26 cents or 0.0526 of a dollar times 500 spends comes out to $26.32 we would lose on average. What actually happened? Well, we said that we had a wins of 160 and uh, on this one, we get paid two to one. So the wins that we had, which we calculated up here, 160, we get paid $2. So that comes out to 320. For the losses that happened to, to happen the rest of the time, which was 173 plus 147 plus 20, 340 times we lost, but we only lost a dollar. So that's going to come out to 340, which comes out to the total that we lost $20 after the 500 spends, which is pretty close to what we calculated because we expected to lose $26.32. We lost $20. And if we recalculate this many times, this would sometimes be negative and sometimes be positive. All right, last one here. So we got the roulette. Let's just analyze this one where we expect value if we if we spin it two times so now we're spinning the roulette wheel two times and we're red, we're betting on red both times therefore using our same structure that we said when we bet on what red one time which is that we have the the numbers that we're assigning and then that's going to give us our code switching between the actual numbers for the red numbers and the black numbers so that we can construct our table so that the first 18 numbers will be the winning numbers out of this column which actually represent these numbers and the second 18 or or the rest 20 would be the losing numbers so here's our table 1 to 18 of these numbers would be the winning and then 19 to 36 and then 37 to 38 would be the buckets uh, that we want to be putting our numbers into. So we can say, all right, the count, we're going to say that there's 500. We'll do this 500 times again. And then we want a random number generation between 1 and 38 again, which is representing these numbers, which can be code switched to these numbers. And then we're going to say that we want uh, the random number generation for... Uh, the second spin, so we did this twice, random numbers, same calculation between 1 and 38, but we spun it 500 times, two times, right? So twice, spin one, spin two, and then we repeated that 500 times, spinning it actually uh, a thousand times, right? So, so now we're going to do a calculation and say, okay, how can I figure out what I want to figure out then is between these numbers when did we have a number that was uh that was a winning number uh which was be below number 18 it has to be between 1 and 18 so first i said we want to have it uh where they're both uh less than 18 so that's going to be this calculation where they're both less than 18 which i'm using an ifs function which i won't go into in detail here if you want to see that in Excel, we'll do that here. And then we want to see where they're both greater than 18. So I'm going to use another Excel function, which is an if ifs function to see if they're both greater than 18. And then this one is going to be uh, if if either of these numbers are these are both zero. So this is counting count ifs these two numbers if they come out to be zero. So I won't go into it in a lot more detail because we're running long and you could see this in Excel if you want to analyze this one a little bit more detail. But let's just look at it uh, conceptually here. We're going to say then we're going to be counting. So we then counted uh, the numbers when they're less than 18 because that's when we're going to imagine they're going to be our winning number out of the 500. So that means that we would have 102 divided by 500 about 20.4 percent of the time what were the odds well we would expect to happen in terms of odds we would say well there's 12 numbers out of 38 numbers uh so wait a second hold on a second that's not right the odds to win we're looking at the odds to win them both would be the first one was 18 over 38 and that would be 0.4736 and then i would have to that would be the same odds 
for the second spin. So to win both of them, the odds would be that times itself. So it would be this times 0.4736 times 0.4736 would be about 22.44%. What actually happened was 20.4 for a difference of about 0.0204 after spinning it five, two times, 500 times to basically uh, test that out. All right, let's, let's look at our expected value. Now, if I look at the expected value for each spin, we expected it to be uh, 5.26 cents or 0.0526 of a dollar. If we spin it twice, we double that. So we expect out of two spins to lose on average about 10.53 cents uh, per spin. Now, notice if we look at each spin, we actually spun it a thousand times because we spun it two times to look at the test of two of them 500 times for actually a thousand spins. If we look at each of the two spins together, then we're taking 500 spins of two times the expected value, which of course gives us the same expected value of the 53 uh, uh, either way that we look at it. So then we can say, all right, what's going to be the, the payout? So we win. So we either we uh, won both of them and we said that happened 102% uh, of the time. Uh, and so the payout to win both, if we win both of them, we're going to get paid $2. So $2 times 102 would be 204. We're just trying to analyze the same concept, but in two spins, right? A imagine we spun it twice, betting on red each time. Uh, what about the losses? So so the, the losses that we had was adding up this column. That's why we did this column over here. So, so we can basically give us our double check number. So if I add up all of these numbers in this column, we can come up to the 130. And if we lose both of them, we're gonna lose $2 because we lose a dollar each bet. And then if what's the, for winning one of them, that's just this outer column that we added up. And I like to add all of those up because then I can double check that this adds up to the 500 spins. And if that happens, we don't win anything because either we lost a dollar first and then won a dollar or won a dollar and then uh, lost a dollar. So we get no payout there. So 204 versus uh, the, the 260 and the zero gives us the uh, 52, which of course is fairly close to uh, our expected calculation over here. We can say, all right, the difference is three. So we expected value, whichever way we thought about it is uh, pretty close. And then uh, down here, we can say that if we look at it from the perspective of each bet, we can say that, that we won betting a thousand times we won uh, 472 times out uh, out of and, and we get pay out one dollar each time 472 we lost 528 times betting a dollar and that's going to give us our 472 versus the 528 gives us the 52 i mean sorry the 56 which is the same as this number up here so the idea is that you could count you could think about it in terms of multiple spins we come to the same uh, concept when we looked at it from the perspective of looking at the odds of spinning in pairs of two times versus basically every spin. And over here, we're thinking about 500 two spins. And then over here, we're thinking about spinning each of those 1000 times. And the expected payout is going to be the same because they're independent from each other. And it's either going to be then uh, do, 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 the the expected payout was uh 0.0526 per spin or once again the uh 0.1053 per two spins which means we would have 1000 versus 500 gives that that same expected value of the 53.